Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. Uh, welcome to uh, Dumb e Episode Questions, Episode 353. Uh, each week we meet here to answer the questions asked on the uh, uh, Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. With us tonight we have uh, David Roseanne. David uh, is uh, a leading internet marketer. He's based in West Sussex in the UK. Um, you can find David at uh, uh, davidrosam.com. And uh, Tim Kappa is CEO of onlineownership.com. Um, Masataki Wasa is just joining us. Um, and Tim Tim Kappa is um, um, is a, a Google product expert. He's CEO of uh, OnlineOwnership.com. He's based in Corby, about a hundred miles north of London. And Masataki Wasa, who's just joined us, um, Masataki uh, um, is webmaster of WasaWeb.net. Uh, W-A-S-A-W-E-B, and um, he uh, is a Google product expert on the uh, um, AdWords, no, sorry, AdSense um, community. All right, so, so we're looking at about nine questions tonight. Um, the first one is titled uh, Over-Optimizing Anchor Text. It's from Ross Raffin who, who asks, uh, when it comes to contextual links within a site, is it possible to over-optimize for anchor text? For example, using identical anchor text for the same URL within the same domain across many uh, um, contextual uh, links. Um, I was reading it, look, I think for years people have said, you know, change it up, but I was actually reading something. I'm sure it was a tweet or, uh, oh, God, was it? I think it was John Mueller answered it in a webmaster thing, and he said, doesn't matter, man. Just, yeah, doesn't matter. And also, if you think about it, I mean, think about, uh, you know, uh, sites with footer stuff and ginormous sites like um, Amazon, they'll have – you know, tons of the same internal, you know, internal links going like site-wide. No, um, I don't believe it's going to be an issue. Um, however, if you're linking from um, content that you've created, you know, you're not always going to use that same uh, specific anchor text uh, if you're writing naturally you know it'll come in different sh shapes and forms which will certainly give it a different uh, sort of a different flavor but um i'm sure i'm sure this 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 thought was pew pewed um by john mew in a webmaster thing over the last i don't know i'm it's going to say the last two months, you can always go in and check them out. Uh, yeah, I suppose. Um, what, what, um, what's the site that Barry Schwartz does? Anyone? Uh, what's it called again? Roundtable. Yeah, go and check on that. Barry would have, um, uh, Barry would have made a thing on that specifically. In fact, that's why I probably saw it. So, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, anyone to add to that? Mm, not really. No. Uh, but just if you were going to be creating uh, anchor text, um, you would. If you were creating good content, you probably wouldn't hit this problem. Um, I'll assume that the uh, that these um, these anchor text, these links are in place already and as as tim says there's probably not a problem 
Okay. Right, let's move on to the next. Um, question two on our run list, um, the struggle on keyword searching. Um, Bervillion Glen Mia Cassissa um, asked, he said, hey guys, what do you struggle with most when it comes to keyword searching? What's what? What's he asking there, guys? Do you think? Well, I, I don't think there's a problem when searching for keywords because there's so many tools out there. You can, you know, you chuck in the keyword, then it gives you broad match. Like pretty much all the tools are very, very similar. You know, um, it gives you a broader match, a phrase match. Um, you can ask questions on it. Um, yeah all the tools are pretty similar you know you chuck it in and it gives you sort of related kind of things um the thing that so getting keywords isn't a problem finding all the kind of related topical theories to it um uh topics uh, not really a problem because the tools chuck it in what I find difficult with it, uh, personally with the keyword, uh, uh, when I said it, is how to then, when, especially if there's like a, a, you know, very, very, very popular kind of thing, is how to then break it down for myself to, to use, um, to use in, in a proper structure so that I'm not just, so that you know the site's not just creating a ton of you know yeah great so it creates a ton of content around all of these particular um um topics you know phrases all, all different things. it's how to actually put them all together in 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 a way that one is beneficial to the actual site and two um that is going to obviously be of particular benefit to what it's intent you know the particular part of the site that that, that is intended to benefit from it um so that's what i mean the keyword research isn't the problem for me personally it's how to take all that information now and then put it to good use um you know either not overkill not you know just that it's going to actually do the work that you've actually put in all the work into. Mm -hmm. Who went yeah. to? Yeah, my, my my struggle tends to be the amount of uh, of, of keywords that uh, come out of um, the exercise of uh, key, keyword research. Um, there's eighty or ninety percent of what I end up with in. Uh, in my spreadsheet um is is probably rubbish um or probably irrelevant or not something that uh, that that answers uh, what people are looking for um so it's it's actually working out which of the key phrases which of the key words um are actually relevant to the, the to the client or the site um it's just sheer amount of uh of words and phrases uh, that's that's what takes up the time for me trying to figure out the the relevant ones thank you thank, thank you david all right let's um, go to number three on our run list this one from neil cheeseman uh, it's titled SEO value in having in content links. Uh, Neil Cheeseman goes on to ask, is there any SEO value in having in content links when the link to URL is already in the navigation menu? Uh, yeah, certainly. Um, because if somebody's reading a, um, 
I don't know. I'm going to say, I'm just going to think this is that your, your theatre site again. Somebody's reading a review uh, on the latest um, play. That navigation menu normally, you normally need to trigger the navigation menu for it to be displayed, correct? But, uh, and let's say it's in the top and it's, you know, uh, and they're halfway down the page and they would now you know now you've you've drawn them in now it's a question of well they might actually want to now at some point below the fold actually get through to the to the to the show i mean you might even have a little thing at the bottom going book show or or whatever yeah um i think it just makes sense uh for the user um but without seeing the site, you wouldn't know. But I would say, yeah, it's not. If it makes sense, put it in. But also just think about the user, especially on mobile. Just remember that, like, uh, depending on the site, you know, sometimes the nav menu, especially when in mobile, nowadays all the, all the rage seems to be that tiny little hamburger thing on the top right of a mobile, on, on the mobile version. Um, and depending on how big the nav is, if they hit that, it's like whoa, you know, it 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 could be it could be massively yeah. So I would say it would make sense to put it in, just from a sheer user moving across. Um, Thank you, Tim. All right, so let's let's call it an answer for for um, uh, uh, question three. Let's look at number four. Micah Fisher Kirshner, um, Micah, um, who's a regular panelist here, um, asked the question. It's titled "Setting an Appropriate Status Code." He said companies set their subdomains that used to resolve on anything. Some of which. Google found to domain doesn't exist, which generates uh, no uh, status codes. How does Googlebot handle this? Should it be set to an appropriate status code or will Googlebot uh, drop those subdomains as is? Mm, um well uh, i'm not I, I, I don't know so it's, it's a random subdomain dot example dot com and then that doesn't resolve anything because that isn't set up right that subdomain isn't set up at all Yeah, that's what I think is going on. Um, I think there used to be something on it, but there isn't now. Oof. Is there any way you could set up a catch-all um, subdomain and have that respond with full 10? Yeah, but that would be look, looked upon uh, as a soft uh, for, for 404, wouldn't it? Because it's, it's not really what's happening. If, if if there's a wildcard, uh, if they've got it set up so it's a wildcard subdomain, in other yeah. words, it answers for anything. Um, yeah, I, I don't think that would um, be helpful. No. Um, I suppose if it's a small number of cases, then that can be ignored i don't know i mean eventually google will, will realize that the pages don't exist right yeah 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 whatever the response code if the page isn't there then google will figure that out and eventually they will drop out mm -hmm. um hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, if, 
if it's one particular subdomain, then it might be worth setting it up and then have it respond with 410. I don't know. With this sort of catch all. Hmm. And I suppose that the content isn't sort of one to one on the actual domain. So it, it's not a sort of a redirect job either. So you know, if it's the same file that happened to be on a subdomain and that can be found on the main site now, then redirect might be an option, but I suppose that isn't the case here. No, true. Uh, the good thing is that um, Michael Fisher Kirshner um, will be a will be uh, on top of it. He'll be able to tell us that in the green room uh, um, next week or even today. Yeah. He, might, he might even turn up today. Well, he'll be able to figure it out. You know, if there's if there was one person who can figure it out, then it's him. <laughs> All right, we can come back to number four. Uh, Shortly, let's move forward and we'll go to number five. It's from Danny Chua. He said, am I heading to the wrong direction? Um, Danny said, hello, I would like to get some advice on, on the scenario below. Um, URL one, um, advise star star dot com for SE. Oh, I don't know what's going on here. Um, URL two, um, advise star star dot net for ads. Uh, both sites serve the same content. Uh, SEO work is on URL one. Should canonical tag be put on URL one uh, leading to URL two? Actually, I won't try and, oh, it, it's, I won't try and read them out. Um, um yeah is, is does anybody want to give us an answer on this one um uh, 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 um so you want to create a duplicate site the main one dot com and the .NET to run ads on. Whether you canonicalize the ads to the to the or the ad site to the organic site, or now index it, I'm still failing to see how you get in traffic to the ad site to actually. I mean, what, what, like, mm. is it for tracking performance, the respective performance of, you know, um, ads and non ads, as it were? No, he wants organic traffic to the, the, the dot com okay. site. And he said he wants uh, the, the dot net site would just be for ads. As in what way? Is he advertising? Right. Is he advertising to get traffic to the, the ad site? From yeah, the, uh, this is what I don't understand. Yeah. Um, like, if you're going to be running ads online, surely you want them to come to your your main site. Yeah. I think Richard asked that question. You know, this is why are you trying? You know, what are you trying to achieve? This and you know, if you're running ads on the site that you're trying to actually generate revenue off on the ad side, <coughs> well, you're not generally going to be getting people going there because you either, you know, the site's not visible or because you don't want it visible as an entire duplication. So I don't know. Like, yeah, I <laughs> no, No, I, I don't understand either. So, well, if there are going to be two sites and if .com is going to be shown in search engines, then that's the site you want to have. So .net will be, well, sorry, the, the .com would be the canonical page, right? Both versions. Um, and you could oh, go index. Yeah. Um, 
Net. But I, I mean, it, I don't see the point. I mean, I'm not entirely sure what what he's trying to achieve. I think it it really depends on that. What what exactly is he trying to achieve by having exactly the same sites, exactly the same site twice over, and for different traffic sources, as far as I can gather. I think we need to also understand is when he says ads, does he mean he's running ads to go to that site, to the ad site, or does he want to run ads on the ad site for additional source of revenue? Mm, but if, yeah, the way that, I understood it was that dot com um, for search results and then dot net for he's running ads to get uh, traffic to his dot net site and he wants to track how he's doing. How yeah, but are doing on dot net. Yeah, but think about the actual user. Like, so, uh, yeah, I mean, you can track your ads properly. Yeah. I mean, you I don't do understand why you can't. It will tell you what, what, is, uh, what is organic and what, what, is, uh, what is paid. So, so I think, I don't know, it, it, I think it really does come down to what, what the purpose of having to sites is you know why do you want to have two sites with exactly the same content if it's purely for tracking purposes then i you know that doesn't really make sense no i i think uh i think um Danny needs to tell us um, what he means by for ads. And yeah, he says the ads click to UO2. So ads click to .net. So if that's what he's trying to do, there's no point. He might just as well have one site and not have uh, any, uh, any chance of the two interfering with each other um, and also not have the just the problem of managing two sites. Yeah. Yeah, it, 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 all in all, it seems like a, a crazy idea. Yeah. He is, right, uh, let's, um, answer the question, he is heading in the wrong direction. Okay, let's call that an answer and we'll move on to number uh, six on our run list. From Kellyanne Crean, it's titled Redirect Planning for a Domain, a domain Migration. Um, Kellyanne said, hi, I'm, I'm doing redirect planning for a domain migration. And I was wondering, for the redirects to give to the developers, do I give them HTTP and HTTPS versions and redirect them uh, to the new URL? Um, for example, would I give them uh, HTTP uh, uh, slash slash uh, .com and HTTPS and both redirect to HTTPS. Uh, the website is already HTTPS but used to be HTTP. Well, while we're um, thinking on this one, um, I've got to thank people like Dave Elliott and, and uh, Michael Martinez. Um, these guys answer answer questions uh, through the week, and uh, they make uh, our service uh, just so much more valuable. And we think thanks so much. Yeah, I agree with Richard. Um, if it can be done in one hop, then that's best. So if you're trying, if the ultimate destination is HTTP S um, domain 2.com, then you want to um, redirect from the domain HTTP domain 2 straight to HTTPS domain 2.com. 
rather than you know having two step redirect yeah. okay thank thank you mr Taki. um okay let's um go to number seven on our run list um, this one from Wayne Davis. It's titled How to Encourage Google to De Index Pages. Um, Wayne said, Hi, I have redirected an old site to my new business site in the HD access file. So far, all of my new URLs for good searches are showing the new site. There are still about 200 pages uh, indexed um, uh, from the old site. And my question is, one, how do I encourage Google to de-index uh, these 200 pages more quickly? Uh, and when is it safe to delete the old site, including HT access and redirect from the domain name? The domain name, thank you. I think it's two things, isn't it? One is, are you getting any, uh, any traffic from those uh, those old URLs and whether you have any links to those old URLs. Um, if you're getting any value from the, the old site, the old URLs, then um, you should keep them live. Um, I, 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 would, uh, I would keep the, uh, the two sites up and running for a good while. Yeah. I, I think Michael Martinez has come in too is, is good. Um, he, he, in the WCI questions Facebook group uh, on uh, he said, uh, I wouldn't de-index uh, the old URLs. I just let Google retire them normally as it recrawls the web. Yeah, I agree yeah. with that. And Richard's comment uh, further below sort of reinforces that. Thank you, Mr. Taki. All right, let's uh, go to number eight on our run list um, from Laurie Heiss Michelson. Um, Laurie asks, what are your favorite free SEO tools and why? Free. Um... Well, I like uh, I like answer the public. There's a new one also asked. I use Squish, a hang of a lot. Um, I use uh, Lighthouse. I use GS Location Changer. Um, what else? Uh, it's not really a tool, but it was a. It's a little Chrome extension snippet preview tool which uh, Dan Petrovic created, but. Uh, it used to take you, if you wanted to check out your structured data, it used to take the, you know, the URL, put it into it. Obviously now that they've actually got a structured data testing tool homepage, it still takes you there, but it just doesn't load up the actual thing. Um, what else have I got? Um, oh, there's such a cool little Chrome extension. Google Search Console full width. That's I use like massively. <laughs> or um, on uh, Search Console, when if you're comparing, so I don't know if you ever, so if you're doing clicks, impressions, and position, and then you do like, let's say, a three month or 28 day or whatever compare, 
and it, it, because then it's going to throw it, show it six times, six columns in Search Console. Well, what this little thing does is um, refreshes it and actually uh, changes the page into a f like a full width, and it actually fits on nicely. So that's uh, pretty pretty nifty. Um, I'm going to have to try that out. Yeah, it's it's just like easier because you know if you're comparing let's say the three month, it's like sometimes yeah, it just it's, even if you're on a laptop, you know, it's it's a bit. Uh, uh, yeah, I think those are my free, pretty much free ones. I use all the time. There must be hundreds. But those mm. are kind of my my ones, which I'm just looking at my desktop. So yeah. My my vote um, is uh, I don't think you mentioned it, Tim. Is the uh, the free version of Screaming Frog? Um, it's good for five hundred pages. I think it will work on lots and lots of small business sites, um, and it's great, really good, um, and not probably not what you're looking for in terms of an answer, but Google Sheets. I use it all the time and it's free. Um, you know, you can't do SEO without a spreadsheet. So, uh, and there's lots and lots of add ons and, uh, and scripts and things that uh, can make life easier. So, I'll go for those two. Cool. All right. Can we safely move forward after this one? Um, I have um, Lurry and likes uh, those answers. All right, Kevin Marlowe on question nine, tools for link building at prospecting. Uh, Kevin said, hello, has someone used Alexa content overlap tool to find similar sites which could be beneficial for link building uh, prospecting? Um, since uh, a free trial requires payment card details, I can't try uh, this tool. And I'm curious to know uh, um, here to hear from anyone who has tried. Uh, and perhaps you, you know more tools which cannot identify similar sites. So far, the best option for me is Majestic, but it's not super accurate. Uh, no, sorry, I've never even heard of it. And yeah, um, yeah. No, it's it's not something I do. Link building, prospecting, uh, and I've never heard of Alexa content overlap tool. So uh, let's let's point um, let's point Kevin towards Michael Martinez's. Uh, partners outreach team and that sounds eminently sensible mm -hmm. all right um i see my, michael martinez uh, said uh, he said in my opinion uh, the best tool for finding websites to request links from is to use the search engine you hope will find those links. That's really deep and profound. All right, uh, anybody else? All right, let's uh, look at it. Thank you for watching time. Um, I'd like to thank you. Uh, um all of you guys here today uh, david razam uh, tim kappa masataki wasa um and also the, the the people who answer questions on the dumb seo questions facebook group um through the week uh, people like uh, dave elliott uh, richard hearn um, michael martinez michael stricker um we thank you so much um We'll be back at the same time next week um, to do uh, this um, all again. 
Um, but uh, for now, it's um, thank you very much and good night.